Have you ever sat down in front of a campfire while being completely immersed in its complexity, thinking, I could watch this for hours? Well, you're probably a VFX artist at heart and you might not even know it yet. We've all played games with awesome visual effects, but did you know that you can bake actual gameplay information in a trail of smoke? Or that you can completely change the meaning of a spell by tweaking its color or contrast? VFX plays a very important role in gameplay, but it's not easy to pinpoint exactly how. So let's clear that up. Let's talk about what it takes to make good VFX in games. Short for visual effects, they are all the juicy things you've seen in your favorite games that feel good when you play them. Fireballs, healing auras and spells, these are all VFX and their main purpose is to be in service of gameplay. Ultimately, that's the goal of visual effects in games, and it's something that's echoed in all the corners of this industry, from AAA League of Legends VFX guides all the way to indie games. When it comes to crafting a good visual effect, there are a lot of variables that must be accounted for, like color, shapes, contrast, and timing. And I'll go into details about those in a second, but the interesting thing is that VFX in games are not really required, just like good sound design or good animations. But if they are not there, you immediately notice that something is missing. For example, look at this gameplay footage, and without dissecting it too much, make a mental note of how fun it looks to play. Now look at this clip from the same game but with all the visual effects taken out. It's nowhere as engaging, it feels like it's unfinished, lacking that oomph. So gameplay comes first, which is not an easy thing to account for as a VFX artist, because if you compare this craft to the movie industry where you see similar CGI explosions, they are not exactly the same. Once the movie edit is locked down, the artists come in and add whatever effects are needed for those shots. And while this is no easy task, in the end that's the exact same shot everyone will see in the movie from that exact same angle, which means that artists don't have to spend time to make it look good from behind. Behind. On the other hand, a similar explosion in a game could be seen from any angle as the player has control over where they are and where they're looking. And to make things even worse, some games allow you to control time, going in slow motion, fast forward or even reverse, and that explosion has to hold up in all of those scenarios, which makes the art of crafting the effects for games orders of magnitude more difficult. And the problems don't stop there. Technical limitations are also very difficult to account for, where in a movie, the visual effects are assimilated and baked into individual frames, making up each scene. So a huge slow motion explosion covering the entire screen is no biggie, but attempting to recreate a similar explosion in a game and store it as individual frames will quickly make you realize that you've just filled the entire memory budget for that game, not to mention the processing power required to play back that explosion. So as a game VFX artist, you have to be very frugal with your resources. Uh, if you make a little projectile impact hit in a MOBA, you know that the player's camera won't be able to get very close to it, so you can make a judgment about its level of detail and resolution to keep things running smooth and not piss off the programmers on your team. And this brings me to a little realization I had while talking to various professionals from the industry about this topic. The title is VFX Artist, but in practice, in the process of creating visual effects for a game, one must have knowledge of many game development disciplines. Starting off with animation knowledge, followed by texturing and the ability to navigate shader nodes, there must be a good understanding of gameplay and sometimes actual programming knowledge in order to optimize and implement the VFX in the game. And in the process of doing so, there must be a tight communication maintained with the design, art, animation and writing departments, followed by sound design, lightning and many other disciplines I'm forgetting to mention right now. So just like a designer on the team, the VFX artist must juggle a lot of responsibilities, which is why there are not many VFX artists in the industry compared to other disciplines. It's a bit intimidating to pursue a career in visual effects, but luckily there are more and more resources available for those who are interested, like the VFX Apprentice courses linked in the description below. There is a story from the development of Diablo 3 that's a good representation of lack of communication. The designers wanted a skill called Ballista, and in their mind it was a low level skill that you outgrow, having to click multiple times to take down a weak enemy. On the other hand, the VFX artists had a different approach. 
we imagined that it would be a mystical ballista that's almost bigger than the character themselves. And it would look like this. There are a lot of things that can go wrong during the creation process, so let's go over the core pillars of good visual effects. As most disciplines related to game development, there are many do's and don'ts, but it seems that the core attributes of good visual effects are largely agreed upon by professionals from this field. Starting with the shape. This is easily used to communicate direction or area of effect. If you want to make something inviting, make it round and soft. And if you want to make something uninviting, make it sharp and spiky. Players are already accustomed to standards and if I show you this shape, you probably already know what it stands for. So use shapes accordingly. If you're making a healing spell, consider sneaking little plus signs as floating particles because players will subconsciously register those hints. Shapes are the starting point for your VFX. So for example, you could use a cone to determine the direction of an attack. However, you can push it further with the use of contrast. Do you want to communicate how powerful a spell is? Contrast is the answer. Keep it low for weak stuff and ramp it up to beef up any spell. Going back to the previous example, this shape tells you the direction in which you're about to cast a spell. But what if it deals more damage in the center rather than the edges? Well, that can be communicated with contrast. And the same goes if the damage is closer to the casting point, fading out as it goes further. A well-placed gradient goes a long way. And even though it might be tempting to make everything be bright and powerful, it's probably best to practice some restraint. Keep in mind, if everything is powerful all the time, nothing really ends up feeling powerful anymore. That's the definition of contrast. But if you want to differentiate between visual effects even further, consider making use of color. Defining the visual identity of a character through the color of VFX would be a very good use of this. Are they angry all the time or peaceful and all about nature? Here's a cool practice scenario. Place a puddle in your game. Make it light blue and it's simply water, completely harmless, but make it shimmer with color and it's now gas. This communicates to the player that they can lure some enemies in it and maybe cast a fire spell to set it ablaze. How about turning it green? It's now poison, red for blood, and this list keeps going on forever and ever. But color doesn't tell the whole story, as timing is probably one of the most important properties of visual effects. Look. That was intentional, okay? It was a joke. I swear to God, if I see comments about this fuck- You could have the best looking particles ever, but if they are animated poorly, the entire effect falls flat. So following basic animation principles, you should avoid any linear motion and instead embrace easing curves. They are your friend. Elements should squash and stretch to look dynamic and impactful, and if you're making a powerful spell, there should be proper anticipation with buildup. A good practice is to try and graph the intensity of your VFX to determine what they represent. A rocket projectile would have a very flat intensity curve as it's flying through the air, while an explosion would have a strong start with a trailing tail. A blinking light will show up as repeating sharp spikes, while a portal to another dimension would be a smoother looping curve. Would be a smoother looping curve. Would be a smoother... If you want to make something inviting to the player, make it slower than the human heartbeat. And if you want to make it repulsive, make it faster. So by simply setting the tempo of a VFX, you could influence how attractive or repellent it is to players. So shape, color, contrast, and timing are the core pillars of good VFX. And you'll see these terms repeated in several talks from professionals around this industry. But I'd like to shine a light on another attribute that I think is equally important, and that is relatability. Mentioned by Julian Love in his GDC talk, he pointed out that VFX artists tend to fall into the trap of driving effects by technology, getting excited or distracted by new tools or a piece of tech that allows for visually impressive VFX, which doesn't tend to lead to the best results, when instead artists should create visual effects based on concepts. If your character casts a spell that needs VFX, ask yourself where do their powers come from? 
Is it from the air, the ground, or from within the character? Nailing down the description of the action will result in VFX driven by concepts that are more grounded and relatable to players. They are clearer and easier to inherently understand, so remember, keep your visual effects relatable. Now, that's enough talk about the pillars of VFX, so that means it's time to check out some awesome examples. People tend to think of explosions when they hear VFX, or mostly decorative, pretty, shiny things, but visual effects could be used in a functional manner when it comes to gameplay. For example, you could use them in order to communicate threats, like the glowing spots that show up on the ground to let you know that a projectile is about to land in that area. This visual effect communicates immediate danger, get the hell out of there now. In Move or Die, I did a similar thing by making the range of this exploding rocket clear through a circle that follows it. This tells players exactly how far away they should stay away from that rocket. It's tempting to always make the effects with soft edges in the hopes that they blend easier with their surroundings, but remember that gameplay comes first, and that's why I think the smokes in Valorant are superior to the ones in Counter-Strike, due to their well-defined sharp edges, reducing the guesswork in a highly competitive game. Here is an example of a frost bomb from when Diablo 3 came out. When they are spawned, these little crystals show up that gradually grow and explode causing damage around them. This shows the player where the damage happened, indicated by the marks left on the ground after the explosion. This does not benefit gameplay however, so the effect was patched later on to show the player where the damage is about to happen, indicated by the circles around the crystal before it explodes. And as the artist responsible for these said, this change doesn't make them look better. They look gamey, but they tell the player what they need to know, which is ultimately what's important. Another cool example relating to threat VFX are snipers. In some games, whenever a sniper is scoped in and looking in your general direction, you'll see a little light reflection off of their scope. This is not only a great way to signal threat, but it's also diegetic. It kind of makes sense that it would happen, and if you're lucky and they miss their shot, you'll immediately know that because of the gunshot sound effect, but the VFX of the bullet smoke trail gives you additional information about the direction and source of that gunshot. Oh my god! Visual effects can also be used to communicate how powerful something is. When you shoot a rocket that creates a fireball when it hits a target, you have to make sure it's the right size. Behind the scenes, the engine determines the area of that splash damage through an invisible bounding box, and if there is a mismatch between the visual fireball and the actual bounding box, then players won't be able to make a calculated decision based on what they see on their screen. A good example of emphasizing power through visual effects is the Twisting Nether card in Hearthstone. Just like other cards, it destroys all minions on the board, and from a mechanical perspective, this can be simply done by triggering the destroy animation on every minion, but that doesn't really look or feel that good. So by embracing the theme of the card, from a lore perspective, it destroys those minions by sucking them into a portal, and without changing the outcome but cranking up the VFX, you get something like this which definitely makes me feel better whenever I play this card. Going back to Move or Die, in the process of juicing up the death animation, I have also added something I call death splatters. They are these big splashes of paint that show up in the background whenever a player is eliminated. And aside from looking visually pleasing, I designed them with a specific purpose in mind. Because the game is fast paced, you are required to keep your eyes focused on your own character in order to stay alive. So I made these big in order to tell you that someone died by noticing the death splatter with your peripheral vision without having to take your eyes off of your character. Its location tells you exactly the spot where that player died and their color tells you who that player was. Additionally, death splatters also slowly fade out and desaturate over time, which adds another layer of information baked inside of them, which is how long ago that player died. If there are a lot of death splatters in a particular spot, it's very likely that you should be careful in that area. So this was my approach to design a piece of visual effect that benefits gameplay. Yeah. 
So visual effects can bring a huge potential benefit to games when they are designed with gameplay in mind. And their reach is very broad. I mean, even the outlines on enemies could be considered visual effects used to differentiate between factions. But there is a danger of too much, which is when you reach the point where gameplay clarity takes a hit, when things are not clear anymore because the screen is filled with shiny sparkling things. If video footage of your game makes the bitrate tank like this, maybe that's a sign that you went too far. In the process of making this video, I talked with several VFX artists, and I've been told that as long as you follow the pillars we talked about before and you keep gameplay in mind, you should be good. And if you need a quantifiable measurement of how good a piece of VFX is, I've been told that the best visual effects are the ones that you make sounds with your mouth for when you see them. So with that in mind, I'll leave you with this. Uh, what am I doing with my life?